OK, welcome back. In this demonstration, we're going to configure some automation into our build and deployment system for the front end. I'll start by configuring a webhook on the OpenShift VoteApp Frontend React GitHub repository so that at any time a developer pushes code back into this repository, the front end build config deployed in the cluster will be notified. This in turn will trigger a chain reaction within the cluster involving a new build of the front end image, followed by the front end deployment config being triggered to perform a rolling update of the front end pods with the new updated front end image. OK, the first thing we'll do is go to step 27 in the run sheet and copy and execute the front end build config querying commands back in the terminal like so. Next, we need to locate the webhook URL and copy it. Now, the GitHub webhook URL has the secret masked out when it is displayed in the terminal. You will need to manually edit it back into the URL. Obviously, it needs to be the same value as used within the build config created in step 22. Alternatively, you can copy it from the OpenShift web admin console within the builds, build configs, front end section. This approach comes with the secret embedded in the URL. Next, I'll use my browser and head over to the OpenShift vote app front end react GitHub repository. Now, since I created this repo, I can edit and change its settings, but you can't. Hence the reason why you should first fork this repository and use your equivalent version for the remaining instructions that follow. Navigating to the settings, webhooks section, I'll then click the add webhook button. Here we enter the build config URL into the payload URL. Confirming that the correct secret is being used as per the value we used in the build config created in step 22. OK, this looks good. Let's now complete the webhook config. Next, we set the content type to be application slash JSON, leaving the following secret field empty. This is not used nor required by OpenShift, nor to be mixed up with the secret value embedded in the webhook URL, which is required by OpenShift. Since we're in demo mode, I'll disable SSL verification. In production, you shouldn't do this. Finally, Click the Add Webhook button at the bottom and confirm that the webhook configuration has been successfully set as per the green tick, which we can see. This indicates that the webhook has been successfully applied and has been received and authenticated at the cluster end. If need be, you can examine the details of each webhook post as sent and recorded on the GitHub side like so. Returning to step 28 in the runbook, this requires us to make an edit in the source code of a locally cloned copy of the OpenShift vote at front end React GitHub repository. To do so, I'll open a new terminal pane and then navigate to an existing local copy of previously cloned. I'll quickly display the directory structure. Now, the file I'll target for an update will be the vote at.js file found here. I'm going to now load this source code into Visual Studio Code. I'll then navigate to the voteapp.js file and open it up. I'll simply increase the version number in the string here from 2.10.2 to 2.10.3 like so. OK, that's done and the file is saved. I'll now commit this change and push it back up into the remote origin, i.e. the repo on GitHub. And if all goes well, this should trigger an automatic build and deploy chain reaction within the OpenShift cluster. Fingers crossed. Step 29 in the runbook asks us to check the current list of builds within the cluster. Let's do it by copying and running the command ocgetbuilds in the terminal. Here we can see that we have a new build automatically started. Very cool. Let's now tail the new build using the command oclogs-f build forward slash frontend-2. I'll watch it until it completes successfully. Which it just has. Next, let's examine the status of the frontend image stream by running the command oc-describe is frontend. 
Here we can see the newly built front-end image. Next, let's examine the front-end deployment config status by running the command OC rollout status deployment config front-end. Here we can see clearly that a rolling update of the front-end pods is taking place. Again, I'll watch this until it completes, which it just has. Finally, let's list out the front-end pods by running the commands ocgetpods and ocgetpods dash l role equals frontend. Here we can see that we have four new frontend pods, all based on the recently built frontend image. Now, the final acid test for this automated build and redeployment sequence is to view and confirm that the expected changes are now served up to the browser. Before we refresh the page, I'll highlight the previous version here, which is 2.10.2. I'll now refresh the vote app page. And we have the expected updated result. The version is now displaying 2.10.3. This is indeed impressive when you consider all of what's happening under the hood and within the cluster. This is definitely a great outcome. Clicking the various plus one voting buttons confirms that the application remains functional. Finally, let's drop back into the OpenShift web admin console and examine the front-end deployment config. I'll navigate to workloads and then deployment configs like so. Drilling into the front-end deployment config displays the front-end deployment config overview. Here we can see the latest version is set to two. Scrolling down, we can see that the front-end containers are now using an image with the following checksum. Jumping back into the terminal, we can then compare this to the most recently built container image as recorded within the front-end image stream. And as expected, it has the same checksum, confirming that the currently running front-end pods are indeed using the latest and most recent front-end container image. Navigating now into the pods view, we can see the four version two front-end pods running here, 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 and here, each with a recorded running status. Clicking on one of these pods and then navigating into the terminal option, we are presented with an embedded terminal session within the browser. This is really useful for quick container troubleshooting. For example, I can list out the current directory contents by executing the command ls-la. I can also run a curl command against the local Nginx web server using localhost. But before I run it, I'll first confirm the port that the Nginx server was configured to listen on. I can do so by jumping back into the run sheet and scrolling back to step 25. Observing the configured container port, which as seen here is using port 8080. Therefore, we can now complete the curl command with port 8080 like so. And we get a successful response containing the front-end HTML. I can also examine the local running processes by running the command ps-ef. This shows that the Nginx master and worker processes are up and running. If you look closer, you can also spot the S2I run script, which if you recall, is used to launch the required container processes. In this case, it would have been responsible for launching the Nginx master process. Finally, we can examine both the logs and events associated with this pod. Both contain useful information when troubleshooting the behavior of pods, running or not running within the cluster. Okay, that completes steps 28 and 29 of the demonstration. In the final demonstration, I'll show you how to tear down the OpenShift cluster and archive off the respective Red Hat cluster subscription. Important to do so if you're not wanting to incur ongoing cost of leaving the cluster running.